Bruchem Aboim. Thank you for coming. Tonight is the uh, end of uh, Hanukkah, and I thought it'd be an interesting lecture. What happens after Hanukkah? We believe that there are four times, actually a period of 122 days, that are designated for personal tshuva. It begins with the month of El, and then the first time is El, and then Rosh Hashanah. Then we have the 10 days of tshuva, 10 days of repentance, Yom Kippur, second opportunity for personal tshuva. Then we have Shmini Atzeret, again the third opportunity where God gives us another chance to get our act together for repentance, to, to become better. And finally the end is what's called Zot Chanukah, and that's the last day of Hanukkah, which finishes off this time of personal growth. And the rabbis tell us that all holidays will be annulled except for Hanukkah and Purim when Mashiach will come. Uh, basically all the holidays are a gift from God. That God has done something to give us that opportunity to celebrate Pesach or Shavuos, the giving of the Torah, even Sukkot. But Purim and Hanukkah were given, by, given to us through our merit, by us doing something, something we earned. And when you earn something, you get to keep it. And that's one of the reasons why also that the Temple Mount still has a sanctity to it, whereas the mountain of Sinai where the Torah was given, once the Torah was given, there was no more sanctity on the mountain because there was no action done by the Jewish nation. Whereas the Temple Mount, we put a temple there, we put work into it. When a person puts work in, that makes it a permanence. We know that the struggle in the world is basically between Esau and Yaakov, the children of Israel and the descendants of Esau. And the Torah refers to Esau as Esau Achi, that when it mentions the name of Esau, it says, Esau, my brother. Yaakov only had one brother. If the Torah would have said Esau, we know automatically it's his brother. If the Torah says Achi, my brother, then we automatically know it's Esau. And the Torah is very stingy on words, so why redundant? Why repeat it? Esav really alludes to Esav as a adversary, someone who wants to kill us. Purim. Purim is about the physical extermination of the Jewish nation. Haman wanted to kill Jews. That was it. He wasn't interested in anything else. He wanted to wipe out all Jews. In fact, at the time of Haman, if a Jew would have converted to another religion, Haman didn't care. It was about wiping out Jews. Achi is really assimilation. It's a spiritual battle. That's Hanukkah. The truth of the matter is the Greeks had no problem with the Jews, and the Jews, in reality, had no problem with the Greeks. The Hellenists, as the Jews were called, those that embraced Greek, the Greek ideals of life and Greek mythology, were very content. It was a nice way to live. The Colosseums, the arts, the literature, they were very advanced. It was, it was much like today. The truth of the matter is that, taking America for example, most Jews in America are American Jews, not Jewish Americans. And really that's the problem. That again, that's Ochi, that Jews have assimilated. I know before World War II in Germany, the intermarriage rate was 75%. So again, Esau comes at us from two different ways. So this spiritual assimilation, during the time of the Hashmanoim of Hanukkah, the real battle, if you, if you stop and think, the Gemara only talks about the war and winning the battle. al Nisim, the prayer that we say when we daven, when we pray, again, deals with the battle. And yet, the whole... The, the whole holiday of uh, Hanukkah really centers around, moves around the menorah, lighting the candles and dealing with the number eight. But it does not mention in the Gemara. It's not mentioned in the Talmud or in the Dominic. Not only that, the whole story of them going into the temple and finding a cruise of oil that was untainted 
And then again, the idea of hit or mitzvah. They could have they could have lit the can the the menorah right then and there, but they waited until they were purified from the dead. This really is only something that a handful of people saw, because the menorah was lit inside of the building in the heichel in the temple. How did anybody know about it? They really took it on belief that that's what happened. But why did they believe? And they might have believed that the menorah was able to burn for eight days with enough oil that was only there for one. Because the real miracle of the burning of the menorah was the pintaliyid, that spark of divinity within each and every Jew. That at a time when the Jews are very much just like the Jews of today, in fact millennials today have less religiosity than the last six generations of, of Jews in the United States. In fact, some say even less religiosity than going back all the way to the origin of the state of, of the nation of, the, of uh, the United States. So when the Hashmanoim went into the temple and they beat the, the Greeks in that battle, not the war, the war went on for 25 years, but when they went to purify the temple, the amazing thing was is that that spark of divinity within each and every Jew all of a sudden broke out in a fire, a torch, that even though they were before that, they were really Jews, they were Greek Jews, all of a sudden through the Hashem Noim and their rebellion they became Jewish Greeks. They became Jews and even letting go the whole concept of being Greek. And the Greeks had no problem with the Jews. In fact, they had no problem with Torah. Because they saw most of Torah as something that's logical. You don't steal, you don't kill. Civil laws that all nations have. What were, what were they against? They were against the making the new months, which are the holidays. The Shabbat. Again, that which is connected to God. And Mila. Circumcision. All these things that connect to a God that deal with spirituality. That's what they were against. Other than that, they had no problem with the Jew learning. They did the same thing. The first language that the Torah was translated into was Greek. The Jews wanted to study the Torah. They saw it as a form of higher education, of intellectual pursuit. And they wanted the wisdom of the Torah. They just didn't want to connect to God and serve God, which is the essence of what it's all about. God and his Torah wants. It's not a book. It's an instruction manual for us to come closer to God. So, the eight days of Hanukkah, it's interesting that all the holidays are really spent inside of a house with the family. Even Sukkot, which is spent in the hut outside, but still, the walls are around. It's not for the world. And it's seven days. Which is, seven is the number of the natural world. God created the world in seven, six days, seven day he rested. a seven day week. Hanukkah, on the other hand, is eight. Eight days. Eight is something above this world. Like Mila, circumcision. Something that goes even above. Something that's totally spiritual. In fact, we see that the world, that the fire, Aish, was really introduced into the world on the eighth day of creation. That when Adam, when man was first created, he never saw darkness. On the, at Mitzoy Shabbos, at the end of Shabbat, is when all of a sudden the sun set, and he was terrified, and he thought that the punishment for him eating from the tree of knowledge was that he would have to live in darkness forever. But God assured him by the of Boker that it was evening, it was morning, it was a natural phenomena that would happen every day. And on Saturday night, God taught Adam, how, first man, how to make fire by rubbing two stones together. Fire was introduced on the eighth day, again, eight above this world, something spiritual. And the, in fact, the word shemen, okay, like olive oil that, that, that we put in our menorah, if you take oil and you put it into any other liquid, it floats to the top. It'll only mix if you stir it. Once you stop stirring, it separates, so too a Jew with the rest of the world. As Haman said, they are heim adam, heim am levado. That they're one nation to live alone. They don't mix with anyone else. And the word, and the na and the word for um, shaman is connected to the word shmona, which is eight. 
And in the word Shmon is the word Neshama. So, all connected. Something above this world. In fact, when it talks about the cruise of oil that they found, it says that it had the seal of the Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol didn't put seals on all the oil. But what he did have was a signet ring. And that ring, what was on that ring? It was a, a ring that had a, a signet on it for a seal of a ches, a chet. Eight. Why? Alluding to the eight begodim of the eight special clothing that the Kohen God wore. Again, the spiritual leader, something above this world. So, why all the other holidays are basically spent in the house, as I said, with family. Hanukkah is totally different. Nowadays, we either put the menorah in our window or we put it by a door. But the actual mitzvah, and even in Eretz Yisrael today, if you look at homes... They have a place on the outside of the house to put the menorah. For it to burn on the outside. And when do we light it? When the, when the stars come out, when it gets dark. When people are coming home for work. Who are we lighting it for? If we light it for ourselves, it should be inside. It's much like the menorah in the temple. The menorah in the temple was on the south side. The south always deals with spirituality. And when Shlomo HaMelech built the temple... He really built the temple differently than we build a house. When we build a house, we have the windows narrow on the outside and wide on the inside, so the light comes in and spreads out to the room. And the Bet HaMikdash in the temple was just the opposite. The windows were narrow on the inside and wide at the outside. God doesn't need light. And the truth is, at night, there were no services that were done in the Hechel, in the temple. So there was no necessity for light. That light that was lit on that menorah at night was for the world, to light the world up, to bring spirituality into this physical world. And so too with the menorah. When we light that menorah, we light it out facing the street. We put it, again, in Eretz Yisrael, we put it in a, a box outside the house to light up the world. And that's what we need to take with us as we move from this Zot Chanista. Hanukkah, this last day of Hanukkah, into the rest of the world. For us to bring spirituality into the world. The word Esh, fire, the Aleph, alludes to the Yud Ke Vav Ke, God's name of mercy. An Aleph is two Yuds, ten and ten, and above, twenty-six, the Yud Ke Vav Ke, God's name of mercy, the Gematria, the numerical value. And in the Atbash, which we've talked about, where you switch the first letter for the last letter, the yud ke vav ke has a numerical value of 300, the shin. So the aleph and the shin of Aish of fire, both allude to God of mercy. So what, is, what, is, what does Hanukkah give us? What does it want us to take fur, further into the rest of the year? And to give to other people? Enthusiasm, warmth, compassion. What we need to do as Orthodox Jews, and the whole world in general, it's to serve God, Ivdu Hashem Basimcha, to serve God with joy and to serve God with enthusiasm. We have an acharayut, we have a responsibility to not just serve God, but in lieu of the menorah, what we need to do, we have upon him, we have a face. We need to light that face. We need to smile at people. We need to look at another person and they need to see us with a smile on our face of that menorah that is our face. Looking at them and lighting that pintle yid, that little spark of Judaism that they have inside of them with the smile that we have. So that just like during the time of Hanukkah, where that turned into this flame, this torch, this blaze of religiosity and a desire to come close to God. That when we look at another Jew, when we look at another person, we need to light that fire within him with our smile. And take that small little flame that's inside of him that burns, that's yearning to come out, and turn it into this blazing fire. So that not only will he serve God, not only we do it, not because we have to, but because of enthusiasm, because of warmth. That's what Hanukkah needs to give us. That we need it tomorrow, and the next day, and the day after that. With everyone that we see and everyone that we touch, and even we look in the mirror and see ourselves, that we need to ignite our own fire. And by doing that, 
by lighting that fire that not only will we do what the Hashmanoim did and have a rebirth of, of godliness and of Judaism and of religiosity, then, but also today, this holiday is not for then, it's for now. That we did the physical act of lighting a menorah. Now we need to do the actual act within ourselves of making ourselves shine with godliness from within and light all of those menorahs, all of those Jewish hearts that, with, that surround us. And again, turn it all into a blaze so we bring Mashiach Zakenu quickly in our time. Thank you very much for coming. Keep smiling and light those menorahs. God bless you and have a good Shabbat.